All right, in this Great Lakes prepping video, I'm going to be pressure canning some beef roast. Uh, these are a couple of roasts that uh, I've had in the freezer for a little while, vacuum sealed, and um, I only like to leave meat in a freezer for maybe up to about a year before I do something with it. Well, I, I found a great deal on some roasts a while back, so I've got a few still in the freezer, so I'm gonna go ahead and, and uh, can these. Now I'm gonna use what they call um, hot pack canning versus uh, cold pack or raw canning, which means I'm going to uh, sear this a little bit. Um, some people roast it for a while to brown it. Um, I like to just sort of brown it in uh, a pan and a little bit of oil. Um, that, I think, um, lets it retain the flavor uh, and the juices a little more. And it also helps keep the meat from sticking together so much in the jars. So the first step in doing this is to uh, cut these roasts up into smaller pieces. Um, some people cut them into long strips that are about the height of the jar. Uh, I guess that's easier if you're using wide mouth jars. I tend to use regular mouth jars. So what I'm going to do is just sort of cut these into uh, big chunks. And I'm not gonna go to great lengths to trim all of the fat out, but if I end up with some just big hunks of nothing but fat, I'll probably just take those right out. All right, we got our chunks here. This is probably only gonna fill up about two jars. Um, and that's a, that's the minimum that you're supposed to use in a pressure canner like mine anyway. You're not supposed to just do a single jar. I don't fully understand why, but those are the rules. So I got probably about two jars worth of beef right here. And just like if I was going to cook this right now and eat it tonight, I'm going to season it. Some people use different steak seasonings or Montreal uh, seasoning or their own blend. I'm simple. Most of the time with beef I like salt and pepper. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and season it with some salt and pepper. All right, I've got just a little bit of olive oil heated up in these two pans here. And I'm just gonna go ahead and add the beef. I'm only gonna cook it for a short amount of time on each side, just until it's nice and browned. I kind of wish that I bought another one of these roasts because as good as this is smelling, um, I wouldn't mind having some tonight. Well, I guess I could always pop a jar open as soon as I'm finished uh, canning it. my best to brown every side of these. Some of them I didn't cut particularly square, so we'll see how well that works.
Okay, that looks pretty good. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, remove all of this from the, the pans and we're gonna get our jars ready. All right, we've got the jars um, in some water and we're gonna get that water boiling so it can steam sanitize these jars. And same with the lids here. We're gonna get those just in a little bit of boiling water and leave them there until we're ready. All right, the jars are sterilized and we can take them out of the, the water here and start filling them. Of course I have my handy jar lifter so I don't have to try to touch scalding hot glass jars. Okay, now uh, I don't I don't always do this, um, but I'm gonna add some onion to the bottom of these jars before I put the meat in. Uh, I have some onions that are probably about at the the end of their life, not quite, but they're getting there. They're starting to get some some little green in there. So I'm just gonna put about oh let's say half an onion uh, in each of these jars. Yeah, that looks good. Now I don't really need to use the funnel because I'm not working with liquids, but I'm going to go ahead and use it anyway just to kind of help um, prevent a whole lot of this uh, grease from the beef from smearing all over the top rim of the glass uh, jar. So I'm just going to sort of cram it in there. And fill it about as, as much as I can. Now when people that do um, raw packing do it, the, the beef hasn't shrunk down at all from any amount of cooking. So after their pressure canning is done, they end up with what looks to be maybe about a half a jar full of beef. Um, whereas doing it this way, uh, I, I also like doing it this way because it looks a little more satisfying that I've just spent all this effort and now I've got a full jar full of beef. Well, this might just about fill both of these. That's good. And uh, feel free to squish it down in there. Well, maybe I can get a couple more pieces in here. Maybe not, maybe not. Maybe, not bad. I've got this one little hunk left that, oh, maybe I'll, maybe I'll just throw that back in the frying pan and, and have a little snack, I don't know. I'm gonna try to smash this down a little bit more with the spoon just to make sure it's all in there real good. And you need to leave a little bit of space at the top as always. Now with hot pack canning, the last step before putting the lids on is to fill the rest of the jar up with liquid, in this case, beef broth. Now if I had roasted this for a while, I could have used the juice from the roasting pan and made a broth with that. Um, but I did not do that, so um, I'm just using some store-bought beef broth, because that's all I had on hand. So I've been uh, heating that up, and it's just about at the point of boiling now, so I'm going to go ahead and add that to the jars. Now you want a, about an inch head space when you do this, and 
rule of thumb with these uh, canning funnels is the amount of space uh, from the bottom of the funnel to about here is 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 pretty good. Uh, uh, in other words, um, if you fill up your jar until it's just about to touch the bottom edge of the, the funnel, then you're in pretty good shape. Let me see if I can move this in view a little better there. So this probably won't take a lot of broth because it's pretty packed full, but I'm just gonna go ahead and put it, put as much in as I can. just about at the bottom of the funnel so that's where I'll leave it well, maybe I could have put that last hunk of beef in this jar but I don't want to I don't want to push it so I'll just leave it like this So I used just a little less than one of these bigger containers of beef broth for these two jars. There's enough broth in here, maybe for another one, but maybe not quite. So I'm, I'm happy with how that measured out. Now, as always, there's two more steps before putting the lids on. The first is to use some kind of utensil uh, such as this. This came with... Um, a canning kit that I that I bought years ago and you just want to sort of try to work it around as best you can to try to get any bubbles um, popped and it, it might be hard to see in this video but as I'm doing this there are some bubbles escaping here to the top and you're just trying to make sure that you don't leave any air in here in the form of bubbles and it might be kind of hard to to get that in there and work it around but just do the best you can and this is a lot easier to do when you're canning uh, tomato sauce or something because there's not a bunch of solid meat in there but that's what you got to do just work it around as best you can and the other thing you have to do is take a damp cloth or some damp paper towel and really nicely wipe the very top edge of the glass. You wanna make sure you've get cleaned off any stuff, any juice, any grease, anything that might've got on there. Because this seal is what keeps your food preserved. That seal is the number one most important factor in all of this okay so now I've got my little uh, my little magnetic lid grabber and I've left the uh, these lids in the the pot of water here just to make sure they don't get dirty while I'm doing this I'm just gonna set it there right on top make sure it's seated evenly on all sides and then go ahead and Screw on the band. And they're ready. They're ready to go into the uh, into the, the pressure canner. So I'm gonna get that going and we'll pick it up there. All right, we're just about ready to start the, uh, the heat on the pressure canner. Um, now with this particular canner, this is a granite ware pressure canner. Um, you fill the water up to the three quart line. Now the line's almost impossible to see, but if I look really close, I can find it. So I've got the three quarts of water in here. I've got my two jars set on top of the rack. You have to have, to have the rack in there. Uh, not only um, does it keep the jars off the bottom of uh, the pressure canner, which is important, but um, if you're very careful, you can use this rack 
to lift the jars out when you're done. I don't use it for that because I'm not, I don't know, I don't have enough finesse, so I take them out one by one. But anyway, now before you get going, it's important to make sure that the pressure canner and all the components are nice and clean. Um, I've just made sure that this uh, rubber gasket is nice and clean. Um, I've also checked the vent hole on both sides to make sure that it's not gunked up with anything from the last thing I canned, if anything uh, somehow collected in there. Um, so the next step is to attach the lid. Let's see if the, see if I put this on the right way from the first step or if I'm going to do it backwards. No, we're good. So it seats down and then locks into place. And as this heats up, this pressure canner actually has a safety lock where a little, uh, a little pin extends um, out of the bottom of one of these sides and locks it into place so you can't actually try to remove the lid while the pressure is still very high. And that's good because if you did, you might um, get severely injured. So I'm gonna turn the heat on. Um, I'm gonna turn it on pretty high. Um, now the, the, the first thing you gotta do when you turn the heat on is let it get up to um, boiling. And it's it, they call it venting in the instruction manual, but you have to let a steady flow of steam start coming out of this vent um, before you do the next step. Now once the venting is complete, I'm going to add the pressure regulator to it. Now, um, beef roast calls for 10 pounds of pressure. And what that means is I'm going to keep one of these rings on the pressure regulator instead of two rings. No rings would be five pounds of pressure. One ring is 10, uh, two rings is 15. Um, a lot of the stuff that I do calls for 10 pounds. And when this presses down over the, the little spout here, um, it, it keeps some of the pressure from escaping, but only the right amount, and that's measured in pounds. Um, so this thing will kind of cover the hole, but as the pressure builds up, this thing will move around and let some of it escape. Um, so I'm going to let this get up to heat here, and, uh, and then we'll take it from there. All right, uh, it's been venting for about 10 minutes, which is the necessary amount of time per the instructions. Um, so the next step is to lower the heat a bit, add the pressure regulator, and I'm gonna do this uh, carefully such that this steam shooting out of here doesn't, doesn't burn me. In fact, So there's no string of profanities in this video. I'm gonna go ahead and grab hold of this thing with a with a towel to do it. Now, uh, this step involves a little bit of finesse with the heat. You have to sort of um, play with the heat to get the right balance because what you want is for this pressure regulator to gently rock back and forth, and it'll do that for the duration of the canning. So it needs to build up some pressure. Uh, before I put this on here, this pressure canner was not considered pressurized. It is now becoming pressurized. And once it gets up to pressure, this thing will start rocking. Now what I don't want is for it to rock violently. That means that the heat's up too high. So over the next few minutes, it's sort of a balancing act with the, with the flame. So uh, I guess I'll stop the video and come back once it's, uh, once it's rocking. All right, it's been about 10 minutes or so, and uh, you can see that the pressure regulator has started rocking. Um, it might actually be hard to hear me over the noise of it. It's kind of noisy. Uh, you can hear each time that it rocks, it lets a little bit of steam out. Um, now, this is the part where I have to adjust the, the heat a little bit because um, it's probably going to start rocking a little too violently pretty soon. 
So I'm going to lower the heat just a little bit, and then it'll take a couple of minutes at least uh, for that heat change to be reflected in what the pressure regulator does. Now something to, um, something to know is that um, the, the canning time in the recipe you're using does not start until you're at this point right here. Until this thing starts rocking like this, um, the canning process is not started. Um, now for roast beef, or rather pot roast, uh, the, the canning procedure requires 10 pounds of pressure for one and a half hours if you're using quart jars. It's one hour, 15 minutes for pint jars. Now you see I lowered the heat a little bit too much and it's stopped rocking all together. So I'm gonna notch the heat back up just a little bit. I want it just to the point where that thing was rocking um, about the way it was. So in a couple of minutes, this thing should start rocking again. Um, now the, the hour and a half for quart time is for uh, regular sea level measurements. If you have to adjust any of your uh, recipes for altitude, um, you'll have to refer to the instructions with your pressure canner to see what that adjustment needs to be. Now, I'm pretty much at sea level, give or take, so that's not something I ever need to think about. Um, but if you're, if you're in uh, you know, Denver or something, you're probably gonna have to adjust this a little bit, adjust the time. So this is looking pretty good right here. So I'm gonna start my timer uh, for an hour and a half and then uh, we'll come back then. All right, it's been an hour and a half. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, turn the heat off. And now I've just gotta let this sit a while until this thing stops uh, making noise. And when it's cool enough to um, all the pressure died down and I can safely remove the lid. So we'll do that next. All right, well, it's no longer pressurized and I'm okay to take the pressure regulator off. And on this uh, particular pressure cooker, there's a little um, sort of button that pops up when it is pressurized and that button has gone back down. So I'm gonna go ahead and open this back up. And see what I got inside. Well, that's about what I expected. Um, the contents inside of the jar are still, uh, they're still sort of bubbling away. Um, they were cooked at very high heat for an hour and a half. Um, so I'm going to pull the cans out of there and set them up on the counter. Now something to mention is that when when these things are sealing, um, there's pressure and stuff escaping out of the top of the lid. And I don't know if you can quite make it out, but the water in this pressure canner is uh, oily and discolored because juices from within the jar are now in it. And likewise, those juices and stuff also would have run down onto the cans themselves, uh, the jars themselves. So after these are completely cool, I always very thoroughly wipe down the jars to make sure there's not any, um, you know, residual grease or food on there that's gonna, uh, you know, turn disgusting when I store this in my pantry. Um, so all I have to do now is sort of leave these alone for a while and let them uh, cool down all on their own. 
and um, in a little while, I'm going to hear the sound of, of both of these lids popping inward, which happens as they cool. Um, if I could predict exactly when that would happen, I'd make sure to get it on camera so you could hear it. And well, there's one of them right there. I don't know if you could hear that over me talking, but um, it already did it. I would have expected it to take a little longer than that. Um, but yeah, that one, one of them already popped in. And uh, if it so happens that after a while it doesn't pop, that means it, the seal is bad. And I could go ahead and, and, and eat the contents of this right now or, or put it in the fridge, but I could not consider the jar successfully sealed and store it um, in room temperature. So that's about it. Um, you know, like I said, I'm not going to just leave this here for the next while to see if the other one pops in, but um, I guess I'll just just stop the video here. That's it. Um, I'm comfortable leaving these on my shelf for about up to maybe six months. Of course, uh, they're not going to last that long anyway. I'll eat them before then. But what we have here is fully cooked. Um, safe, shelf-stable uh, beef roast. Until next time, this is Great Lakes Prepping.